we get to sing together, and I'm happy about that. So if, if you didn't get a bulletin, you can download it on the website. I think it's under the video tab. There's a thing for bulletins. Also, Aaron has some over there, but let me get this going. We uh, continue with, that's not it, that's not it. Continue with our opening hymn, hymn 915, Today Your Mercy Calls Us. make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. I've missed being able to do this. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because your abiding presence always goes with us, keep us aware of your daily mercies, that we may live secure and content in your eternal love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Psalms, Chapter 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and, and see the recompense of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge." No evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, the sixth chapter. 
Let not sin, therefore, reign in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. Do not present your members to sin as instruments for unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and your members to God as instruments for righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but under grace. What then? Are we to sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to, any, to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or God, that you, uh, or, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness? But thanks be to God that you who were once slaves of sin have become obedient from the heart to the standard of teaching to which you were committed, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end, eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Brother will deliver brother over to death, and the father his children, and children will rise against parents and have them put to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to the next. For truly I say to you, you will have not gone through all the towns in Israel before the Son of Man comes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for the disciple to be like his teacher and the servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? And not one of them will fall to the ground apart from your father. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, you are of more value than many sparrows. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our service continues with our hymn of the day, hymn 570, Just As I Am.
Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our living and loving Redeemer. Amen. When it comes to, to secular holidays like the 4th of July, Memorial Day or, or Labor Day, Mother's Day, I usually try not to make a big deal about them in the, in the church because they're not church holidays. I try to stick to, you know, Christmas or, or that if, uh, this, the, the holidays that celebrate various saints or, or other events. So, so why am I saying this? Well, as somewhat of a, as a disclaimer or a kind of to preempt something, because I'm going to use some fatherly imagery in my sermon today, uh, and, and I don't want to be accused of, of being a hypocrite or playing favorites with holidays because, well, this one has to do with me. I have preached the same sermon even if this text came up next week or the, you know, last week or whatever. Now that I got that out of the way. Have you heard somebody say the, the phrase or the sentence, I brought you into this world and I'll take you out? Heard it many times, I've maybe even said it myself. As far as I can tell from my brief internet searching, uh, it actually did originate with, with Bill Cosby, uh, especially in the pilot episode of The Cosby Show way back in 1984. You might remember that funny scene at the end uh, when, when Theo was talking about trying to live on his own and, you know, you're a, you're a doctor and mom's a lawyer and I would love you guys even if you weren't. Why can't you just accept me for who I am? And, and Cliff Huxtable said, as, you know, he says, that is the dumbest thing I have ever heard. And then later he says, I brought you in this world and I'll take you out. It's a funny, funny scene. And it's a pretty funny quote as well. But if he stopped and thought about it for a second, it's actually somewhat terrifying if you were to take it seriously. Like imagine hearing this and your father meant it, that I brought you into this world and I can take you out of it. Now let's go one step further and imagine hearing this from your heavenly father. That your heavenly father were to say to you, I brought you in this world and I can take you out. It's a scary thought. But that's ridiculous, right? It's ridiculous because one of the main messages of the Bible is fear not. Take courage. Don't be afraid. You know, Yahweh says it to, to his prophets and, and to the, the, the people of Israel. Angels say it whenever they encounter somebody in the Bible, do not be afraid. Jesus says it to his disciples over and over again. In fact, you, you can find this phrase, you know, fear not or don't be afraid, over 365 times in the Bible. I'm sure somebody probably has already made a daily calendar with a verse each day telling you not to be afraid. We hear it in our reading today. From Matthew chapter 10, we're kind of picking up where we left off with uh, last week with Jesus sending out the 12 uh, to begin to, to proclaim that the reign of heaven is at hand, this, this inbreaking of the reign of God. Jesus says to his disciples, he says that some, some bad stuff is going to happen. Brother will deliver brother over to death and father his children. And, and the children will rise against parents and have them put to death. He says you're going to be hated for my name's sake and you're going to, fear you're going to face persecution. Some bad stuff is going to happen. But then he says, so have no fear of them. Later he says, and do not fear those who kill the body. And again in verse 31 he says, fear not therefore for you are of more value than many sparrows. Have no fear. Do not fear. But, but wait, did you hear the rest of verse 28? He says, yeah, and do not fear those who kill the body but, get, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. That sounds rather ominous. That this whole theme of the Bible of do not be afraid, do not fear, take courage, and all of a sudden, Jesus tells you, actually, no, do fear. Do fear. Says we are to fear the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Why is he telling us to fear God? Well, he says everything else you will face in this world, everything else you might possibly encounter or find yourself afraid of, the only thing it can do to you is, is physical or, or temporary harm. Says God, on the other hand, yeah, he can do that physical temporary harm stuff too. 
But he also has eternity in play. And that's terrifying. It's terrifying. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Fear God. And that's where some people stop. That's where some people stop the story and we get this picture of this terrifying, judgmental God waiting to smite anybody who steps out of line in the least little way. Some people stop there. But Jesus doesn't. Jesus, yes, presents this picture of a judgmental and terrifying God, but he takes us beyond there. He says, don't focus on the things of this world. Uh, again, all these things uh, th that, that might harm you in this life. Do not fear those who can kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Don't focus here. Focus there. And you might be terrified at first. Yes, he can be terrifying. But wait, there's more. Don't just look at that. Look what he himself is doing right now in this inbreaking of the reign of heaven into earth, in this inbreaking of the reign and rule of God that is coming to his people. Look at what he is doing in the person and work of Jesus Christ. His disciples got to see it and experience it. And we ourselves, when, when we look, we can say, don't, don't be overly concerned with the things. Don't. Be consumed with the things of this world. Don't be afraid of them. Rather, fear God, but in that fear, also see what he has done for us. That all of those things that we have to be afraid of, chief amongst of which is our sin. He says, I have taken care of that in Christ. Yes, there is a lot to be afraid of today. COVID-19 is still going on and we don't know what, what the, the future holds, whether it's for business or for schools or when we'll be able to worship safely in the sanctuary. Who's sick? Who's not? Did, did this person have it? Do I need a quarantine? There's a lot to be uncertain and afraid of. The civil unrest going on in our world. Whether it's uh, what people are doing in the streets or, or the reaction that people are having to what happens in the streets. There's a lot to be afraid of. And uncertain and even if all this other stuff wasn't going on anyway we still find ourselves with no shortage of things to worry about fear not Jesus says these things that can only harm your body instead fear him who can kill both body and soul in hell he has brought you into this world but he is with you in this world. He is with you always in this world. And he will take you out of this world. Not in judgment, but in love and mercy because of what Christ has done for us. I pray again as we go out into the world and we face various fears that our focus would not be on those fears, and those fears would not uh, affect the way we, we act or, or behave or, or to treat others, but instead we would be able to boldly go out and share that love of our Heavenly Father with all those we meet. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues as we confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Faithful God, when we are fearful of our enemies and weary of the struggle, you have been our shield and our strength. Grant to us the full measure of your grace to, to sustain us against all who are against us and help us to endure the trials and temptations of this mortal life and be faithful unto death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, with your favor upon us, we pray you to help us in our fight against temptation and sin. Help us to live holy and righteous lives by the power of your spirit. And keep us from surrendering ourselves to the slavery from which Christ has set us free. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, give healing and strength to the sick and all afflicted in body or mind, and grant the, to those who struggle the gift of peace of mind and heart. Restore our nation and the world in health and livelihood, and preserve us from pestilence and fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, by your word and table, you continue to feed and nourish your people with all that will sustain our lives and faith. Help us to receive these gifts with faith and with repentance. Bring us to that day when all earthly division will cease, and united in faith we shall be one people before your altar. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, Father, and everything else for which we need, we pray you to grant us for the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, who died and rose and lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame death and the grave and gives us eternal life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we gather before you evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth 
to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ in the night when he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper and when he had given thanks, he blessed it and gave it to his disciples saying, drink of it all of you. This cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Again, we'll be receiving the uh, communion after the, the closing hymn. And now receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn. Hymn number 924, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. That concludes our service, at least the main part of the service. Again, uh, once we're done with this, please just hold tight for a second and let anybody who uh, is not going to be communing for whatever reason uh, exit the parking lot first, and then we'll have, I think George is going to be helping to usher people. We're going to try to do like this line first and then that line just to clear out this way. Don't run over my camera. It's, well, there's two of them. Yes? Let's have the second line go first, give these people more room to back up. The second line. Okay, apparently we're going to do the second line first. Sorry, man, you're stuck. Uh, yeah, no, that's a good point, good point. Up. Yeah, um, you know, however it happens, we're not going to throw down spike strips or whatever if the wrong person does it. Uh, but if you're watching on the live stream or on the DVD later on and you would like to make an appointment to receive communion, call the office, we can do that. Um, but yeah, go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.